everyone, welcome to tonight's Team Impact Weekly Call. I've got Brooke Collins here with us tonight, and this lovely lady is going to be sharing a little bit about her system for organization for her business. She is a mom of a very busy, if you're on Snapchat, you can tell, uh, very busy, let's see, 10 months, 9 months, 10 months? 10 months. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, close to a year now, so he's mobile and getting around. So she's super busy as a single mom for the most part because her husband is deployed a lot and she's got a lot of work on her shoulders. So she has to find a way to keep herself organized so that she can manage her time correctly. And she's got a great system to share with us tonight about that. So, um, two star diamond, um, rocking her business, right? A one star. Oh yeah. <laughs> and close to two star. I'm sure. So close, yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, rocking that business and she's a big part of our team impact council as well, helping to lead the entire team impact as uh, we go further into our journey with the council. I am so, so blessed to have her there. A great source of organization and just Constant feedback. We love having Brooke on there, and I'm really, really proud of her. I'm glad that she's going to share with you guys tonight. So, Brooke, you can take it away. All right. So, I made a whole little slideshow just because there's a lot of different, um, I guess, techniques that I use that I just wanted to make sure everybody can see so that you guys can get the most, I guess, benefit out of it. So, um, organization is something that like has been a must for me like my whole life I don't know why I'm one of those crazy people who just thrives on lists and trackers and all that good stuff so um, if you're on my team I mean they all know organization is huge and I always have some kind of list for them to put something on and it's helped me in my business since I've had the baby because like Lauren was just saying my husband's gone all the time um, and I have to take care of everything here at the house. So if I don't have a system going, then I just feel like totally chaotic. And I wanted this to be a business for me and I didn't want to treat it like a hobby. So I just created these systems and I hope they will help you guys. So the first thing I wanted to show you guys is a daily to-do list. I think that this is an absolute must in your business. It's something that you need to be doing because if you're not working from a to-do list, then you're a like not going to get fulfillment out, out of what you're doing because everybody likes to like feel accomplished and pat themselves on the back for completing something. But also, it's going to outline everything that you need to do every day. So I have a daily to-do list, and then I have an extra to-do list. And I did a screenshot of it here of my daily to-do list right now. And I use an app. It's called Wonderlist. It's on your app. You can access it as an app or on your computer. So you can link the two and you can, you know, work from your computer or if you're like me, you have to work from your phone sometimes. And so it's just been really beneficial for me. You can star different items. You can see on the right hand side, I start my power of threes, my daily tasks, personal development, workout, shakeology, and clearing the inbox because those are my five things that I need to make sure that I do every day no matter what, and then the rest of my daily to-dos are as I have time, as I have, you know, more than an hour a day to work if, you know, Brian takes an, an extra nap or something. So um, a to-do list just really has helped me to make sure that I'm getting my priorities done and I'm, you know, abiding by that 80-20 rule where I'm putting 80% into my business, that new business, and then 20% into what I already have because I really think that especially as you get up into the star diamond ranks, if you're putting all your time into everybody else and not in your business, you're going to be like me and your whole business will eventually just fall to the ground and then you're going to have to start over. And I don't want that for any of you guys. So a couple little notes that I added on here, I'm going to go over most of this um, in detail on the other slides, but when I'm clearing my inbox every day, that's the first thing I do every morning. As soon as I log in for my power hour, I clear my inbox and I just basically go in, I go to just the unread messages and I answer everybody one time. I don't sit there and have conversations over and over with anybody. It's just one response. I go to the next person, one response, next person, and I get everybody cleared out so that I know that I at least answered everybody one time and I'm not leaving anybody out and I don't have certain people who have messages from four days ago that haven't been answered. Um, when I check in with my challenge groups, um, this is totally opposite of what like Rachel Greenhold does. I admire her with her challenge groups, but for me, my challenge groups are not my total passion in the business, so it's something I'm working on. I think it's always a work in progress with something. So I go in probably once or twice a day, and I comment and like on the previous day's post, and if it's like, like tonight, if I go to bed and I'm laying there awake, I'll go in and I'll comment on today's stuff, but I'm not in my challenge groups every day, all day long, because I just don't have the time for it, because I have a baby. Like, I've started this job so that I can be home with him, 
and I don't want to be on my phone 24-7 checking into my challenge groups. They know I'm going to be there and I'll answer their messages, but I'm not going to be there 24-7 because I'm not a superhero. Um, and then checking in with my team, it's the same thing. I check in once or twice a day. If I have free time throughout the day, then I do check on them, but I'm not in there all the time just you know, commenting on everything all the time. Um, so those are my top things that I work on. And then cleaning, like I'm a clean freak, so I have to make sure my house is clean. I have like a, I have a list for my cleaning schedule. I'm not sharing that with you guys, but I do have that as well to like clean a certain room in my house every day. So I don't feel like I have to clean an entire 2000 square foot house every single day because I would go crazy. And then networking with new friends, Instagram networking, that's just kind of liking and commenting on other people's posts. And then right now, my team and I are doing the 30-day push with Shalane Johnson, which is really good if you're trying to get organized in your life as well. You go to 30daypush.com, and it's just a 30-day series of videos that she sends you to help you get to-do to lists in your life, to help you set goals, and to help you get organized in all of those. So the first thing I want to talk to you guys about, and everybody I think on the call probably knows what this is, the Power of Three Tracker that Annie created. This has been a game changer for my business. I started using it um, right before I had my baby, or it might have been right before I got pregnant with, with Brian. But this list has like completely transformed my business. I know everybody looks at it and maybe filling in the names every day isn't so fun or you feel like you're making people be just a number. But I promise you guys, as you continue doing this in your business and as you organize yourself and you have tracks or like a track record of who you're talking to, eventually it will pay off in your business. So make sure you're doing your power through tracker. I'm going to go over the different parts of it as we go on in the, at the end of the call, I guess. Um, so I, I'm sure you saw on my first to-do or my, my to-do list, I had a daily task that I did each day. So we all know as coaches, you have all these things that you want to be doing all the time. You know, you want to make sure that you're, you're doing everything that you need to do. And for me, I felt like I was trying to do all of that every day time and I felt overwhelmed I felt like I could never stay caught up in my business I always felt like I was one step behind and so what I did is I created a a daily task that I needed to complete each day with the different things that I was trying to get done every day so on Mondays I email all my new clients you know as an emerald or above coach you get free leads and so I email all of those leads I'm checking in with my current clients that are in my new groups I'm making sure that they've gotten their products things like that um, as an Emerald coach, you know, we always preach for you to have your spouse signed up on your week, your week leg to add volume to help you earn more cycle bonuses. That's all kind of advanced stuff, but I transfer all of my extra volume to my spouse's account to add to my week leg volume. If you have questions about that, talk to your upline diamond coach or your upline star diamond coach and they'll give you info on that. Um, I delete pending friend requests because I don't know if anybody's been in Facebook jail, but it's a thing and I don't want to be in Facebook jail. So I did a little screenshot here at the bottom. You guys can see the first circle here is um, where you click to, to get to the screen to delete your friend requests that you've sent that maybe haven't been accepted. So you're sending out three friend requests a day, but not everybody accepts them. That's just the reality of it. And if you have like 50 plus pending friend requests, Facebook might alert your account as spam and you don't want a chance losing your Facebook account. For me, I don't want to lose it for my business, but also because that's where I keep all my pictures, which I need to change. But anyways, um, so to see your pending friend request and who hasn't accepted, you're going to click on that little people icon at the top by your messages. And when you open that up, it'll at the bottom, you click on see all and then view sent requests. And then it'll show you all of your requests that have been pending that haven't been accepted. And you just hover over that and click on cancel request. So I do that every Monday. So from Monday to Sunday, if you haven't accepted my friend request, I'm not going to keep your request pending. I'm just going to delete it. And, um, you know, obviously that person doesn't want to be my friend and that's their loss. Just being a smart aleck. <laughs> and then I add my new customers to my Facebook customer list. So I'm going to show you guys that here in a second. But anybody who purchases a new program or a new challenge pack or Shapeology that I'm friends with on Facebook, I'm going to add them to this list so I can keep tabs on them as well. So creating lists and adding to favorites with that. So when I'm saying adding my customers to a list, I have an actual list that I go to on Facebook. Instead of scrolling the, the news feed on Facebook, I'm scrolling these lists so that my power hour or my, my Facebook scroll time is more like for work and not so much for me to just randomly be scrolling and seeing all of my coaches posts because that was what it was becoming for me. I couldn't network with my new friends because I wasn't seeing their posts. 
because the Facebook algorithms that they have right now are um, basically if you're whoever you're interacting with on their posts, they're going to start to see your posts. So you want to make sure that you are interacting on your new friend's posts so that they can start to see what you're posting and they could be, you know, susceptible to seeing maybe a coach invite or a challenge group invite that you're doing. I know that there was just a chat, so I don't know if Lauren, you'll keep track of it and then just like let me know so I don't miss anything. Um, so to create these lists, um, you can see here I have four different lists. I have my personally sponsored downline, my customers. I have January to March friends, April to June friends. This is just how I personally have um, listed them. I also have a list that's above the personally sponsored downline for dream coaches. And then I also have one for my pushers that are in my entire downline so that I can also see what they're doing. And so what I'm doing with those is I'm, I'm going in and when I say, okay, I'm going to scroll Facebook, I'm going into my January to March friends and I'm scrolling only those people's posts. They're not alerted that they're on this list. They are seeing, or I'm seeing just what they're posting. So it's just more targeted towards them. I can comment and interact and then I know they'll see my posts eventually as well. So to create this list, you're going to go down on the left-hand side of your Facebook screen and you click on more over where it says friends. You kind of just hover over here, it'll pull up and it says more. You click on that and it's going to bring you to this middle screen here. You click on create list and then it'll ask you to type in whatever you want to name the list and then you just start adding people to that. So I go to my Power Free Tracker and I see who's accepted my request and I add them to this list and then I just go from there. I do it, I do, you know, four quarters a month, so January to March, April to June, and so on. And that's just helped me to not have 800 people on one list. I can, you know, be more specific and have maybe only 200 on one list. And then um, to add it to your favorites, because we all know that this is just in general, even if you're not doing these lists, we're added to hundreds of, not hundreds of groups, but a ton of groups when you sign up to be a coach. You have your challenge groups, your training groups, your personally sponsored team, your upline team, all those team pages. and and for me, it was hard to keep up with everything, and I couldn't remember the name of every group that I was in, and I would sit there on Facebook trying to search it. And so I discovered that you can add groups to your favorites. So at the very top of your newsfeed on the left-hand side over here, it'll show, like, your name, and then it will show your favorites. And I added my team page. I added these lists. I added um, different training groups I'm a part of or that I'm leading. And that's helped me to see, you guys can see, like, the 20-plus over here. That means there's 20-plus posts that I've missed. So I know if like I'm looking at the team impact one and it says 20 plus posts, I haven't checked my team page in a while and I probably should because I want to be present on that page. So to create the, or to add those groups to your favorite, you're going to go to groups on the left hand side again and you click on more and then you just find whatever group you're looking for and you add it to favorites. And then as far as adding the lists to your favorites, you do the same thing, but you go down to interests on the left hand side of your, your home screen and it'll show you the different pages and you add those pages to favorites. So you can rearrange them and you can put them in whatever order you want and just kind of play around with it. And that's just been really helpful for me as far as like having scroll time on Facebook, but it's like scroll time that's not wasting my time, it's benefiting my business in some way. Was there any questions for that slide that I should touch on? No, okay. No, just good comments. Okay. So my next daily task is on Tuesdays. So um, I'm kind of a cheapskate, so I don't want to pay. I was paying for Hootsuite for a while, which is an auto scheduler for your posts on Facebook and in your challenge groups and stuff. And I was paying for it for a while, and one of the girls on my team, Abby, was like, I just use Hootsuite and Buffer because I get to, you know, use Buffer for my personal posts and Hootsuite for my groups, and it's just been free for me. So a lot of you, especially like new coaches starting out, maybe you don't have the extra money to spend right now on on a, a certain website to use to, to post your post on Facebook for you while you're at work or something. So I use buffer.com and hootsuite.com. I use buffer for my morning quotes and it actually gives me an analysis of my posts, like which posts had the most comments, which posts, you know, maybe didn't have the greatest comments on, or not the greatest comments, but the greatest number of comments. And it's just helped me to see what posts are doing well. I don't use Buffer for all of my posts because I, I'm, I work from home now. So for me personally, I do a lot of my posts at, this, at the time I'm doing them. I'll kind of think of them throughout the day and then post them as I go. I do my morning quotes. That's kind of something I've done since, I, since before I was a coach. I was always a quote person. They're all over my house. 
So I look up quotes every Tuesday and I schedule those out for the week for every morning. So 7 or 8 a.m. you're going to see a post on my Facebook and it's a morning quote. And people come to my page looking for that because it's consistent. And so that's the beauty of having Buffer and Hootsuite is you can be consistent in your posts so people know that, like for me, for instance, around 10.30 is when I'm doing my workout. So people are going to see my workout photo. So if I'm not posting it, they know I'm not doing my workouts. And some people have called me out on that. and. So it's just created um, consistency with my followers. They know what they can expect from me, but it's not something that like I have to be in the moment at 1030 there to post. I can schedule it out and say, here, I want this post to go out at 1030. So buffer.com and hootsuite.com are huge. I do all of my challenge groups with Hootsuite. I schedule those all out on Tuesday, whatever post I'm going to post every morning. It goes out at 6 a.m. And then my challengers, whether they're on the East Coast or the West Coast time, they're getting their posts as soon as they wake up, they're alerted. It maybe, you know, the first thing a lot of people do when they get on Facebook is check in to Facebook, or I'm sorry, when they wake up is check into Facebook. So the first thing they're seeing in my challenge groups is a post for me that's mo motivating them in some way. So that's helped me in my challenge groups. So um, that's my Tuesday daily task is just to buffer everything out for the week, hootsuite everything out for the week. And I only go a week in advance, unless I'm going on vacation or something. And then my daily task on Wednesday is to add last week's accepted friend requests to my contact list and then to my Facebook new friends list that I showed you guys on the last screen. So we all know the importance of having a contact list. If you don't have one already, you need to create one. We've done past calls where I've showed you guys how to do a contact list through your Facebook friends list. You just copy and paste it over. So. Um, we can share that with you guys if you need it. Just let us know and we'll share it with you. But I add all of the accepted friend requests to my contact list and my Facebook friends list. So, you know, we're adding people all week on our Power of Threes. How do we know if they've accepted our friend requests? Because I don't sit there every day and as soon as they accept my request, I'm not on my computer to open this Facebook up and add them to the list. That's just not realistic for me. So I go through my Power of Threes and I look at all of their names and then I try to add them to this new list that I have. If their name comes up, they've accepted my request. If their name doesn't come up, they haven't accepted my request. So I know I don't need to add them to my contact list because they're going to be deleted on Monday if they haven't accepted it. So um, that's just how I keep my contact list up to date. If, I, if their name pops up into this list, I open up my contact list and I add their name at the bottom of it. I'm going to show you guys my contact list here in a second. My Thursday daily task is... Um, is my follow-up or to take all of my no's from my follow-up list and transfer back to my contact list. So this is kind of backwards. So I'm going to skip to Friday just so you guys can see it first and then I'll go back to Thursday because what I do each week is I take all of my invites from my power of threes and I add them to my follow-up list. So the power of threes, you know, I just copy and paste and then I go over to my follow-up tracker and I paste them all in here. I put the date that I invited them to and then what I invited them to. And that's pretty much all that I do in that, that moment. And then throughout the week, I'm going to make sure that I'm keeping up on that follow-up list with their response. And then if I followed up with them again or, you know, what their responses were with that. So with having a follow-up list and, and having the contact list the same format, you guys can see the name, the date invited, to what response, et cetera. That's all the same because what I'm doing is as I have these ongoing conversations with them, if they say – you know, I'm really not interested because I can't afford it. I'm going to write not interested right now. They can't afford it. And I'm going to have a, a post that week talking about the fact that I didn't afford my challenge back either. I couldn't afford my challenge back. So I'm going to like refute that person's objection in my public post because if one person's feeling it, somebody else is feeling it too. So I try to keep track of my objections so that I can make posts about them so that people – are reading them can see like oh she couldn't afford it either but now she just paid off all of her debt and only has a mortgage like that's pretty amazing I, I wonder if I can do that too and so people will start to see those things and be like oh well she really is just like me she's just you know two years ahead of me and I could do the same thing in two years so um, with my follow-up list like I said I'm I'm just tracking their name the date I invited them what I invited them to mm -hmm. If they ask for more info, I sent them an explanation of a challenge group. Maybe I sent them different videos on YouTube. And then I, when I follow up with them, I track their follow-ups. If I get no response over and over and over again, I'm not going to keep following up with the person. Or if they say no, I'm not going to continue following up with them. So then what I would do is on Thursdays, I take all of my no's or all of my no responses, 
and I just cut them from my follow-up list and I go over to my contact list, I hit control F and then I type in their name and I have like 1800 people on my contact list. So I'm not going to sit there and scroll through and look for Jane Doe. I'm just going to hit control F. It comes up with her name and then I hit paste on that same line. And then all of that information is tracked. And then maybe next year I talk to Jane Doe again and maybe I can look back on these notes and have a little bit of information that, you know, she couldn't afford it back in June of last year. Maybe in, in December she can afford it. And I can kind of talk to her about that or I can, you know, make those posts, like I said, and maybe speak to her in my post. So um, having a follow-up tracker and contact list with the same format has been really helpful for me. And it's helped me to just track those conversations. So I'm not messaging the same people over and over. When I'm going to message somebody in my power of threes, I'm not messaging the same, you know, 15 people every week. I'm messaging different people because I have a contact list. And I go to my contact list. I find three people. I copy their names and I paste them into my power of threes. And then I go to their Facebook page and I find something to interact with them about. And I comment and or I send them a private message. So I know a lot of people, the messages are one of the hardest things to do aside from inviting on your power of threes. The messages should be the easiest part. That's the fun part. When you get to know somebody and you get to build that relationship and form them and get to know their life and get to know maybe what struggles they're having and how you can relate to them. There's so many people on my friends list that I'm talking to every day that have the same exact story as I do. And I get to be there, even if they never buy a product from me, I get to be there to just give them advice on the death of a parent and how I got through it. And I get to help somebody through a hard time. And so that's really special in a way, aside from just feeling like an icky salesperson messaging somebody to get a sale eventually, you could just be having a conversation with somebody and, and completely change their life because you're a good person. So don't ever discredit that in your messages because they're just a number on the Power of Three document. You really can have an impact on that person's life. Um, Another thing I like to do with my messages to make it a little bit easier to just kind of flow into conversation is I look at whose birthday it is that day and I send them a, a personal happy birthday message in their inbox versus on their Facebook wall. So how many people would appreciate a personal message versus, you know, a message on their Facebook wall with 300 other people? I feel special when I get a personal message that says, hey, beautiful, hope you have a great birthday. What are you doing? Or something like that. And it's going to make them feel special. So that's just something I do to kind of break the ice with my messages. And then, like I said, if I'm, if I don't have, maybe it's not their birthday or nobody's birthday is that day. I just go to them and I say, Hey, you know, I noticed that your son just graduated from kindergarten. That must've been so hard for you. Like I can't imagine Brian's 10 months old and I'm already dreading that day. How did you get through it? And ask for advice or just comment on the vacation that just went on or something like that. Bring up something that shows that you're interested in them. And that's been helpful for me. I think I kind of got ahead of myself there, but um, that was just my little rant. Um, so I wanted to share with you guys my power hour, which I do during Brian's nap time. So when I started this business, I was working 10, 11 hour days and I was working six days a week. So I didn't have time. My husband was deployed. I didn't have a, a baby. So that, you know, that was one less thing that I had, but I didn't have time. And so what I was doing was I was working one hour a day until I quit my job. I was working on my lunch break. And then I quit my job and then I was just working whenever. And then I was always on my phone or always on Facebook. My husband still jokes about that all the time. Like, Oh, you were always on Facebook. And now I'm not because I wanted to have a consistent time where I checked into my business and I did business work because this isn't a hobby for me. This is a business and I'm clocking in every day to make sure that my business is moving forward. And it's not just me aimlessly scrolling Facebook, looking for somebody to message. So my power hour is always during Brian's nap time. I've actually, the past couple days, like I think last Wednesday through today, I he wakes up, you know, two, three times a night. So he usually wakes up around 5.45 or 6 a.m. And I've actually been staying up and he goes back to sleep. And I get a solid like hour or two of just quiet time with my coffee. I feel like my coffee tastes better because I'm not chasing a, a 10 month old around the house and I just get to sit enjoy my coffee. I get to be present in my conversations. And so that's been helpful for me. If that's not realistic for you, I have been doing it during that time, you know, before the past few days, but I will say waking up early. I hate waking up early. I'm not a morning person, but my coffee gets me through it. So, um, but the first thing I do when I log in for my power hour is that I said earlier, I respond to all of my on un my unread messages. So I do this from my computer. 
I go into my inbox and then on this little over here on the right, you can see where I clicked on more. I click, I highlight unread and it'll pull up only my unread messages. So I'm not scrolling through some people I've responded to and then some people I haven't and back and forth. It's just my unread messages. And then I scroll all the way to the bottom and respond to the oldest message first. And I just go up one time and I don't, if somebody responds right away, I'm not going to sit there and message them back and forth. They got their one response and if I have extra time later, then I'll continue to message with them. Or if it's something super you know, pertinent that I need to get to right that moment, then I will. But for the most part, it's one, one message and then it's, that's it. While I'm doing that, I have my power of threes open because a lot of times in your conversations, people are going to be talking about needs that they have in their life. So you can find an invite out of a need that they have. Maybe you ask them how their job was and they said they hated it. Well, boom, there's a coach invite. Add them to your power of threes, send them an invite, hit enter, run away from your computer like I do, go do something, and then they've already responded by the time you come back so you don't have to stress it anymore. And if they don't respond or they say no, then it's not the end of the world. You at least offered. Um, so that's, you know, I, I do all of my messages and a lot of times I get at least one or two names in each category on my power of threes from just responding to my inbox at one time. My second thing is, um, my invites. So I am not somebody who likes to hassle or hustle anybody. Like I don't want to send out random invites all the time. I feel weird doing it too, just like everybody else. But you have to do it because my coach, if she had never invited me, I wouldn't be here today. So I know that I need to invite other people. And, you know, the customers I've had that have lost 50 plus pounds, if I never said, hey, do you want to join my group? Maybe they wouldn't have lost 50 pounds. Maybe they'd be in the hospital right now or whatever the situation might have been. But I, I made an impact in their life. And there's thousands of more people out there that I can help. And I want to do that. So the invites are hard, but you just have to have that in the back of your mind. Like, I'm going to help somebody whether they like it or not. I'm going to pr plant that seed in their mind. And maybe they'll say no now, but three months down the road, maybe they'll say yes. So um, a great book with um, invites or with doing things that are hard for you is Eat That Frog. It's by Brian Tracy. And it's a, it's a quick, easy read. I read it, like, I think in a couple days. And it just teaches you to take the worst task, like the thing that you hate doing the most, and doing that first. So for me, it was my inbox. Like, I hated waking up every morning to 54 messages and having to respond to them all. I didn't have the time for it, but I had to make the time for it because those were the messages I needed to be responding to. Next was invites for me. So I just go through my fitness posts and I invite anybody that I've maybe had a prior conversation with that has liked or commented on my recent posts. If people are liking your stuff and they're not already a coach or a customer, they're interested. So start conversations with them if you've never messaged them before. And then once you have a conversation going, it can turn into an invite. But if you've already had a conversation with them or if you know them well, if they're part of your warm market, shoot them an invite because you have nothing to lose. You've already like built the relationship in it, so just go for it. So that's how I go through my invites. Um, if I don't have anybody that is you know, liking or commenting on my post that's new, I go through my messages, like my power of threes, who I've been messaging lately, and I'll message them and say, hey, I know we've been chatting recently. This might be random, but I have a new group that's starting, you know, July 20th, and I was wondering if maybe you'd be interested in joining, or if you knew anybody who might be interested. Quick, easy, hit enter, walk away from your computer, and it's done. Do it three times, and you're done for the day. The next hardest thing for a lot of people is friend requests. So the easiest way to do it is to go to the People You May Know tab, and I friend anybody who I have five or more mutual friends with that doesn't have mutual coach friends. So I'm not going to add somebody who's already, like, being – shown other coaches posts because if they do sign up it's probably going to be with the coach that's been on their newsfeed for a year you know they're not going to sign up with me and if they did I would feel bad anyways so I try to add anybody that has five or more mutual friends I don't care who the mutual friends are if I have five or more mutual friends I'm going to add them because hey why not they accept sometimes and sometimes they don't but I can tell you guys from experience most of my coaches and most of my clients I had no contact with before I became a coach. I didn't know them. They weren't family and friends. Some of them were, but like the majority of my business is people that I randomly added that have just said, Hey, like, what are you doing? And I've invited them. So don't be afraid to add new people. You're not adding them specifically to sell. You're adding them, hoping to inspire them in some way, because hopefully your page isn't all about beach body and isn't all about how you want to sell people stuff. It's about changing lives and making an impact. And you can just add value to their life in some ways. So don't always think of it as you're being an icky salesperson. You can also just be that awesome friend that they that posted that 
quote that they needed to hear that day. And then your follow-ups, you go to that follow-up list that I showed you guys earlier and you pick three. So you've done all your invites, you've added them to your follow-up list. If you're not following up with people, you're not going to be making success club. You're not going to be helping people sign up as a coach or whatever it might be because the follow-up is the key in this business. I can, I mean, I assure you guys this, most of my success club points every month are from follow-ups from prior months. I don't get a yes right out the gate every single day. It would be great if I did, but that's just not reality. A lot of people need to be shown this business or this, this challenge pack opportunity a couple times before they actually say yes. So follow-ups are super, super key in your business. And I know for me personally, before I started this system, my follow-ups were so sporadic. I was just going through my inbox and looking for people that I had sent videos to but never followed up with. And when I would message them, be like, hey, were you interested? They'd be like, oh, yeah, I bought it a month ago, but I bought it off of, like, Amazon. Because they didn't really, like, I didn't follow up with them. So that was my fault, not theirs. So make sure you're doing follow-ups with people. Maybe set alarms in your phone if you need to do it that way. But for me, it's just been putting them on that list and going through that list and doing my follow-ups every day. I already talked to you guys about my messages and um, on a different post, like I said, I had gotten ahead of myself. And then my sixth thing that I do during my one hour that I work is the daily task. And that usually takes 15 to 20 minutes. Brian, I'll usually wake up before I'm done with my daily tasks. So I usually have to like continue that in my next hour hour just because that's mom life. And you can't ever finish something when you start it. Like it just, you get to do it when they want you to do it. So I usually, as soon as he wakes up, I stop what I'm doing and I spend time with him. And then if he takes another nap, then I'm working on that other nap. If he doesn't take another nap, then I'm working that night. And that's just going to have to be how it is. I can't tell you guys how many times I've stayed up late for team calls or I've um, missed, you know, I've been late to a dinner or something because I was, I was working with a client or whatever it might be. Like you guys have to treat this business like a business. It's not always easy to make those sacrifices. But if you don't make sacrifices, you're not going to get to the point in your business that you want to be at where you have that kind of freedom. So make sure that maybe that, you know, tonight The Bachelor's on and maybe that's like your all time favorite show. I like The Bachelor and I'm on the team call right now. And that's just the reality. You have to make those sacrifices sometimes. Um, so com completing the rest of my to do list, I talked, you know, I showed you guys my list in the beginning, my personal development. I'm not a huge book reader, so I like to do a lot of audio. So I do different podcasts on my podcast app on my phone. You can download audio books on YouTube. Right now I'm listening to Developing the Leader Within You by John C. Maxwell. I have the physical book, but I found the, like somebody reading it on YouTube. So I'm listening to it be read to me on YouTube while I do the dishes or get ready for the day or and, you know change Brian's diaper or give him a bath or whatever it might be. Like I can listen to an audio book because that's not – taking time out of him. That's just me putting good into my mind while I'm taking care of him. And it probably is better for him anyways. I have more patience. Out of him. <laughs> um, but I do all of that, you know, while showering, driving, cleaning, anytime that I have that like time where there's just silence, I'm probably listening to some type of audio personal development because it's always good to pour your support into yourself so that you, you can pour into others. Um, I try to work out before Brian's first nap of the day with him. That's just, that's been new as well. I was, I was working out while he took his first nap, but I just felt like I was really not able to do my full power hour when I was doing that because his naps are still really inconsistent. So I try to work out with him and you know, it's really fun because I get to post videos and inspire other moms and show other moms that my life isn't perfect and I don't always have a baby who sits there and just watches me work out. Sometimes he's screaming. Sometimes he's taking the video and putting it on his face instead of on me while I'm trying to film a workout move, whatever it might be. But that's just adding to my brand in my market and showing people that I'm human. I'm a mom and this is real life. Um, I usually check in with the team and challenge groups first thing when I wake up um, or when I go to bed. You know, when Tim's gone, the first thing I do when I wake up is go on my phone or the, first, the last thing I do when I go to bed is go on my phone. If he's home, I'm not really doing those things. But, um, you know, while I'm feeding him, I can scroll, you know, my team pages or challenge groups, just any empty space that you have throughout the day. I try to do three to five posts a day. I'm sure you guys have heard that as well. I do my morning quote, mid-morning workout. I try to talk about the coaching freedoms every day, if not, I mean, maybe not every day, but most days I'm trying to talk about some kind of coaching aspect so that people know that I'm a coach and know that they can join or that this is an opportunity for them as well. I try to just share my personality a little bit about being a mom. You know, I when Brian was first born, I was sharing all kinds of stuff about his 
awful gas or his awful like you know bad diapers that would just leak everywhere and I would share those things and all kinds of moms would just relate to me and I would be able to build those relationships with them on my post and then eventually bring it into a message and then my evening post is usually just kind of whatever's on my heart I try to do like some kind of call to action on some nights some nights I just talk about me drinking my wine watching the bachelor or whatever it might be like I just want to show people who I am so my my whole Facebook page is not screaming beach body it's screaming health and fitness and it's screaming freedom but it's not always like i'm a beach body coach here's t25 this is what's on sale because i don't want that on my page i wouldn't want to see that so i don't want to give that to my followers um during my brian's second nap if he takes one or during you know whenever we're nursing he, i scroll my new friend list and i, I interact on their posts so that they're seeing my stuff I clean the house throughout the day as Brian's occupied or as he's ripping stuff out of the drawers while I put stuff away in the other drawer because that's, you know, again, mom life. Post about that stuff. <laughs> um, I don't work past 5 p.m. usually. That's my family time. When Tim's gone, I usually have like a push season for myself. You know, you got to have those seasons in your business where you're putting extra effort in. And so usually when he's gone, that's when I'm pushing my business a little harder and I'm working later at night just because I have nothing else to do. So why not work instead of, you know, watch trash TV all night. So I do work in the evenings, but when Tim's home, I'm off at five every day, unless it's a team call or something that I'm on. So my total work time, I would say is two, maybe three hours a day, depending on what season it is in my business. But for me, I mean, it started out with one hour a day during my lunch break. Now it's two hours a day because I have that freedom. And I feel like my life is balanced. I'm home and I'm present with Brian every day. I'm home with Tim when he's home. And that's kind of what you want to work towards and that's what organization and being consistent in all of this will give you hope um you know those are kind of the benefits of it and you also won't have scatterbrain that was the worst thing for me I hated just like opening up my Facebook and I'd be like okay well now what I guess I should message somebody and I guess I should do this and now it's like I know I need to do this and I'm going to check it off my list and then I'm going to feel really good and I'm going to want to do the next thing so make sure that you guys um, find something that will motivate you throughout the day to continue working harder and for me that's just checking off something on a list so that's all I got well I want to add a little bit to oh I'm getting like crazy echo that's gonna bug me okay so I want to add a little bit that when I look at everything that you put together tonight or for your call for your um, cluster call you did this to me looks like the activities of a woman who's serious about her business because you basically treated it like you would a full-time job and um, those of us who have worked in the corporate world you don't usually have the type of job you know if you have a desk job or something that you have to go to every day you probably have a set list of things that you're required to do and you probably don't just do the same thing every single day there's probably like okay mondays i have to do this tuesdays is this oh fridays we have a meeting i have to prepare for on wednesday you know like you know that there's things that you have to do throughout the week usually you have a list and you work from that list because you have someone who's expecting you to get those things completed and you have reviews and you're going to be sitting down with someone and they're going to be critiquing you on how well you did that you know like that's what you do in the corporate world and so you are used to that when you have a job we all signed up to be a coach and want to get financially independent and make a billion dollars and we expect that, oh, I don't have to do anything. No. <laughs> so Brooke has just completely outlined for you how she took her business from, oh, I don't know, maybe I should send a message today or something to, I'm going to treat this thing like a business. And when we say treat your business like a business, that's exactly what she did. She applied everything she's ever learned from working in the corporate world to man, I'm going to make myself a to-do list. And on Mondays, I'm going to do this. And Tuesdays, I'm going to do this because it's going to prepare me for Wednesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays. And all of a sudden, she enjoys her job of coaching. So she just posted something last night. And it was funny because I was just thinking as I was kind of getting ready for bed, it was Sunday night. And everybody always dreads Monday morning. And it's so cool to be in a, a job where like every day is pretty much the same for me. So I don't care if it's Monday or Friday or Saturday. It doesn't matter to me. And, but I remember that feeling of hating Monday morning, hating Sunday nights really, because it was like, Oh, all my fun is over now. And now I have to go back to the real world. And she posted something that said like, you know, when you work at a job where you still, when you look forward to Monday mornings, it's really awesome. I was like, you know, that's so cool that other people feel that way. And the reason she feels that way is because 
of an organization. So if you're feeling like, oh man, I just don't understand what to do, I don't know where I'm going with this, my business is stalled, it might be time for you to take some of what Brooke has presented and just say, okay, how, maybe you don't need to do her exact list, but you could take her list as an outline and you could say, okay, I'm gonna start applying some of these principles or maybe take her exact list for now and then adjust it throughout the week as you realize what you need to do differently. Or maybe you need to do a little more prep work. She's done things to set up lists to set up things that she's ready to do. You may have to do a little bit of back work. She didn't get that, all that done in one week. You know, she's been working on that for a long time and now it's a system. So, um, Brooke, do you have like your um, list that you can give everyone? Yeah, I was just pulling that up right now. I'll put it in the chat box for you guys to, I have like an actual for my, in my team Google Drive, I have like the sample trackers that I use. Yeah, so we'll, I'll post that on the team page when I post the recording too, and that way you guys can take it and actually do something, apply it, and, and maybe start your own to-do list for yourself and get started so that each day of the week you have two or three things that you know you're going to do. You've got your non-negotiables, of course, your vital behaviors, but then every day there's something like, hey, this is the day that I make sure I've deleted all my friend requests. You know, those are, are great little tips for you guys. It's not rocket science. She's put together a really, really great, simple list of things to do to help you get started. And it's things she's doing right now as a star diamond coach so you know that they're working for her and she's still doing them. So it's a really, really great, not just a call about organization, but a great way to put your mind around how to be successful as a coach. So um, we've got a couple more minutes, and I want to make sure you guys are able to ask questions. I didn't see any questions yet, just basically great comments that they love your system. Um, are you doing Teamsy? That is one question they have. I, when I, everybody was talking about it after the call, I tried it for like 10 days or so, but because I already had my system, I just stuck with it because I was already kind of in it. I had my flow of my tasks and... I felt for me personally, I didn't need to invest the money in it because I already had something, but I think Teamsy is great if you, if you maybe don't want to sit there and create a Google Drive for yourself and do all of that. And then something else to add too is with Google Drive, that's where I keep all of these documents for myself. Some days I can't work on my computer because maybe Brian doesn't take a nap or he's extra fussy. I can work from my phone with those same things because I have it all linked in the apps. So. That's what I love about Google Drive, and I couldn't do that on Teamsy, so I wasn't a fan of that either. Yeah, and there's another great tip. Just because somebody is doing something that's working for them doesn't mean you have to do that. So, you know, we presented Teamsy because it was working really well for Annie or for maybe a brand-new coach who had, didn't invest a lot of time in a system, but Brooke was like, yeah, not really going to be my thing. I've got a better system. She just saved herself months worth of having to go back through and – redo everything because she thought, oh, we got to use Teamsy now. She already knew, you know what, I've got a system that works for me and I'm not going to waste time just because someone else is doing it. And that is a problem a lot of coaches fall into. And you'll see every little thing someone suggests, you're like, oh, shiny object, I'm going to go do that now. Or, oh, I'm going to reinvent the wheel over here. And, oh, I'm going to do this now because that person's doing it. And every call you listen to, you're going to get some tip or something that someone else is doing. But make sure that it fits with what you're doing. If you don't have a system at all, pick one. This is a great one. If you're already using Teamsy and it's working really well for you, just apply that to the to-do list that she's got. Maybe, you know, instead of saying power of threes every day, you're doing your Teamsy work every day, you know, because that's working for you. But don't feel like you have to reinvent everything, every call that you listen to, or you will constantly be trying to redo the same stuff over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. Great, very cool. Um, all right, so we've got her Google Drive system. I will go ahead and save that and then post it with a team call later. I'll, also, I'll give you the link for the slideshow. I put that on my Google Drive as well so that people can access that too. So okay. awesome. Yeah, if they want to get your actual like to-do list. Awesome. Yeah, or like the steps for however I created all that. Awesome. Great. Thank you so much, Brooke. What a like totally packed call full of awesome content and things for people to take away. Um, hope everyone got a lot out of that. I know I did. It was great to hear it. And I will go ahead and post up that recording so if some of your team didn't hear it, you can share it with them. So thank you so much, Brooke. If there's no more questions, then we'll sign off. All right. You guys have a good night. Thank you. Bye, Brooke. Bye, everyone. Bye.